Hey there, YouTube friends. Um, I'm here today, and um, I want to talk a little bit about something. Um, I know you hear about all the hype. Um, it's not really hype, but everybody now is jumping on mental health and, you know, mental health awareness and all of that. And um, so I guess you could say this is going to be my contribution. I kind of want to make at least two videos um, dealing with anxiety. Because I myself have a lot of anxiety and um, I kind of feel like it's because, um, I mean, this is my own personal opinion, I'm not trying to self-diagnose because I actually have a diagnosis of anxiety. Um, but I've been a lifelong nurse more than half of my life. I have been a registered nurse working in very stressful situations. And so a long time ago, I've been a nurse for 23 years. Um, a long time ago, they didn't stress taking care of oneself and self-care. Um, that's just not something that was talked about, nor was you know, mental health, anything like that. And so I feel like that's you know part of where my anxiety comes from. Um, I also have... Uh, well, now this... I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. But that's been a few years back. Um, now, the more research that I've read on complex PTSD, that sounds more like what I have rather than PTSD because I didn't have just one single event in my life. It goes back to my nursing career. Because one day, it's probably been, what, 2018, 2019, um, I was at the nurse's station in a nursing home. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I love working in the nursing home, but it can be so chaotic. I mean, a hospital can be the same way. And, um, so I was standing there. I was like, this is like a war zone. People going everywhere, noise everywhere, chaos. And I, I just felt like I couldn't shut it out. And it was just too much. It was overwhelming to me. And so that's just a little bit of insight on me and, and my mental health. Um, I don't talk about it a lot. I mean, here and there it may come out. Um, but, you know, I I like to think that I've got a better handle on it than I used to. I mean, it used to be I was very, um, well, I was misdiagnosed with a seizure disorder for many, many years, like 13 or 14 years. I was told I had seizures when actually what I was having was panic attacks to the point where I would freeze up and just shut down. I was still wide awake up in here and in my nurse's brain I was like this is not a seizure. It can't be a seizure. I'm wide awake and I know what's going on. But trying to get doctors to understand that I finally found one that listened to me and he took me off all my seizure medication and um, recommended a good mental health um, a psychologist and a psychiatrist and that's when my life started to improve. So, um, I am not one to take any more medicine than I have to do in part to that experience, but something I have found that helps is meditation. Now, I hear some people in the crowd going, oh, we can't do it because of my religion. No. Um, the meditation technique I use is not, um, it's not against anybody's religion. I will start that out by, by saying, you know, it, I ask that you give me a few minutes into this video and you will see that I am not against anybody's religion or anything like that. What I aim to do in this video is to teach you kind of a, a counting technique. Um, you can focus on your counting, your breathing. And, you know, it's meant to redirect your mind away from the painful anxious thoughts to what you're working on and it gives you something tangible to hang on to while you're doing it so you know I want to get that right out in the outset that I don't care what your religion is this is nothing against that I'm not asking you to pray to a strange God or anything like that we're simply going to be breathing and counting and crocheting in this video so um now that I got that out of the way, 
I can't think of anything else that anybody would disagree with in this video so far. Um, I ask that you, this is meant to help people, and if you feel like this doesn't help you, then just move on. Don't give me a thumbs down, don't make negative comments, I'm only here trying to help. So, with all of that said, um, what you're going to need, um, a scrap ball of yarn, well, any yarn, I don't, doesn't matter to me, but I, for this, this particular exercise for myself, when I get super anxious, I keep little balls of yarn. Now, the purpose here is not to make something, although you could make something if you wanted to, like if you have a project that needs a circular base, but the whole point is we're not going to be super hard on ourselves. And if you miscount or you miss whatever, usually what ends up happening at the end of my projects, I just take it all out and start over again and, you know, use the ball of yarn again. Um, the point here is not to create, but to soothe. Okay. So that being said, this is one of my favorite colors. I like blue, but it's very soothing. It's, um, I want to stress that you could use any yarn but I want to stress a soothing color. Something that is kind of muted. Um, something that you like to work with. I like the feel of this yarn. We're trying to create a soothing, positive environment. Now, this is not ideally my, my um, hook of choice because it is red, but it is a comfortable hook. Um, all of my other hooks right now are being otherwise engaged in something. And this is just the closest one I had at hand. So, um, but like I say, it does not matter in the least to just, just a hook. You may have a favorite hook that you like to use. I know my mom's favorite hook was her H hook. She was forever losing H hooks because those were her favorites. Um, that was her favorite size. And she liked the metal crochet hooks. So... You know, if you have a favorite crochet hook, by all means, this is the time to bring it out. Um, next, you're going to find yourself a comfortable seat. Um, whether it be sitting cross-legged on the floor, in your recliner. I personally am sitting at my kitchen table because that's, uh, that's, that's only for this video. Because I can't really shoot where my favorite seat is. It's kind of hard to shoot that video. But I want you to get in a comfortable position. Um, so where your body is comfortable, you're going to be sitting in a comfortable crocheting position. Um, you may find a soothing drink. Some people like tea, some people like coffee, some people, you know, whatever, whatever your soothing drink of choice is, have it close at hand so you don't have to break what's going on. You can just reach over and grab it. Um, also, you're going to want to find a quiet place. Or you may choose to put on some quiet music. Some people enjoy um, rain sounds or beach sounds. I personally like water. Um, I'm a very much a big beach goer. And so I like waves or streams. And I just put that on in the background. Um, that's usually, you know, either that or I put on Spotify. Just something that gives you that soothing atmosphere. A lot of this... Um, soothing stuff is to calm down your body. You want to, you know, if you have a scent that you like in your little scent diffuser, put it on. You know, um, some people use lavender, but you want to, you want dim lights, you don't want super bright lights. You want that calm, serene sound or uh, environment. And, you know, we're doing sight, smell, touch. We're not really tasting anything unless you want to count the drink. Um, so, I mean, you're trying to get all five senses in there. Pleasing to all five senses. Um, and so, you know, once you're comfortable in your seat, you know, then we can start. And, um, let, and let me remind you, you know, you, this is not to create something because... 
more times than not, like I say, I end up ripping things out and using the same ball over and over again, depending on how stressed I am. I always carry a ball of yarn and a crochet hook. I travel, you know, I, I carry my emergency travel kit in my bag. And, you know, if I get to the point where I'm overwhelmed, which on night shift, most of the time I don't get super overwhelmed. That's one of the reasons I work night shift. Um, but anyway, if I get to the point where I just can't handle it anymore, where I feel like I'm super stressed, I will say, I'm taking my 30, I'll be back. Or I'm taking a 15 and I'll be back. Um, I step away, I step out of that situation. I recognize, and that's the first key if you have anxiety, is recognizing that you are at that point. Now, let me stop here. Disclaimer, I am not... I am a health professional, healthcare professional, but I'm not any kind of licensed psychologist, psychiatrist, anything like that. Just a nurse with 23 years experience dealing with people with mental health issues. And this is just practical knowledge I've picked up along the way. That's my disclaimer. Not meant to diagnose or treat or anything like that. This is just a non-pharmaceutical method. Okay, got my disclaimer out. And so what we're going to do before I start, so people have monkey brains. Um, you know, have you ever visualized a monkey at, at the zoo? And they're just like all over the place. Here, there, everywhere. And their brains are a lot like that. We jump from subject to subject to subject to subject. We can change our minds in so many different... Let me just can. And so it's important to remember that. And, and it's natural. People do that. Have, I mean, just being mindful someday, just sit there and think about, you know, you're thinking about something and all of a sudden come to the reality that you were thinking about it. That's called being mindful. Um, and so being mindful during this practice is going to be very key, a very key part of this practice. So say we're sitting here, you know, and we start and your mind starts wandering off and thinking about dinner. You're going to say, oh, thinking I need to get back to my, I need to get back to my crocheting. I need to, I need to get back to my meditation. And don't get mad at yourself. Don't be angry with yourself. Just say, oh, I was thinking about something else. And just simply go back, you know, and the idea is to keep your mind, actually visualize in your mind as you're crocheting the number or the breath you know, whichever you choose. I choose numbers because it's easier for me to keep track since I'm already counting anyway. And I say, oh, I was thinking, I was thinking about work or I was thinking about my patient. And in the beginning, you may think a lot until your brain settles down. In fact, you know, I may, um, I may have to stop and, you know, go back and count to see where I was. That's why I say we're not really trying to create something here because the focus is not on doing something perfectly and right. We're just using the repetitive practice to calm ourselves. And I want to stress, please do not be hard on yourself. I want you to be patient with yourself in this process. So, you know, you may, like I say, count, you know, and then you're off and thinking and you just stop. And you can even tell yourself out loud, oh, I was thinking. And then just return back to your your numbers or breaths. Okay, so that that's where we're gonna start. And I'm gonna once I start this practice, I'm gonna try not to this video may get incredibly long. And so if once you get the hang of it, feel free to stop. You know, or if you want to use this video over and over again, you may choose to see where the video starts, the actual process. You know, if it helps you go to that starting point instead of listening to me ramble on for 15 minutes about the process. Um, so um, let's just get started. Okay. And as far as making a ring, it does not matter if you want to do a magic ring or if you want to chain and work in a ring or however, but we are going to be working in a ring because we want to just keep on going. Now, um, you know, and it's, it's, 
it's not terribly important unless you're creating something to count at the end of each row because mistakes will be made it's just part of it um, so I'm gonna get started now and I'm gonna try to just um, I'll try to guide a little bit while I'm doing this but mostly it's just for you to see the practice in, in action and I, I truly hope this helps you um, okay so we're gonna start with our magic ring and it does not matter how many you want to put in there however many so I'm gonna do six in my ring and it doesn't matter singles doubles half crochets whichever your favorite stitches so there is one two three four And if it helps you in the beginning to count out loud, then count out loud. This is for you. It's not for anyone else. And that is the end of my first row. And I close it up. I'm going to do my chains. And then the next row, I'm going to put two in each one. So there is one. Two, And while you're doing this, don't notice your breath. If your breath is fast or if, you, if you're holding your breath, release that breath and just breathe. Okay? Be mindful of your breath and your thoughts. One and two. One and two. beginning again I'm going to join with a slip stitch feeling that stress just go away melting there's my chain this time we'll have our three stitches one two and three Three. Now my pattern is one half double and then two. So we're following the typical circular. So the second round would have been two in each one and then the third round is going to be one and then two in each one and then the next one's going to be two and then two in the next one and so on and so forth. Um, any kind of circular whatever pattern. So here we are back at one, two, three, 
focusing on that counting. One. Two. Just crochet at a comfortable pace. It is not a race in this situation. We are just trying to, to be calm and be easy with it, and just letting things go. It does not have to be perfect. Just, just count and breathe. And here we are back at the beginning of the circle. Along the chain. And this time it's going to be two and two. So one, two, three, four, one, two. Two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. You can continue this on as long as you choose, as long as you are still feeling that anxiety. I'm going to stop here. And sometimes, you know, I would like to point out that if you will visualize this, if you're still kind of feeling stressed out and anxious and all of that, at the, if you just can't crochet anymore, you can visualize this as your stress. And, you know, as you're sitting here, you can take it out. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking it out. I'm going to wrap this around like this. And just as you're taking out your stitches, just wind. We're not doing this fast. We're just winding in a little ball. And we're visualizing our stress. We're taking and we're releasing that stress with each stitch that's removed. And we're just wrapping it back up for a new beginning so we can start over. Just wrap and just let that stress go. Just let it go. 
let that anxiety go and just continue to breathe as you're unwinding. Just let it go. Um, I hope this video has helped. Um, I just do what I can to try to help my fellow man. I'm going to give you the formalities. Um, if you like this video, please give me some comments and feedback. Um, I know some of you say that I'm hard to understand sometimes, um, but the point here is not to yell at you or anything like that. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please email me or leave a comment down below. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you feel like this would help someone else, send this video to them and share. Um, I highly encourage you to, to just get this out there to help people release their anxiety in a very beneficial way so i'll see you in the next video have a wonderful peaceful day